everybody uh, this is our little video um, from Hampstead Lock um, and on our way to Crofton pumping station um, a few days cruise um, stopping off at a few places on the way morning morning yeah. now off to the first lock of the day um, cops cops lock, lock. yeah we just left Hampstead Lock and we're halfway between Newbury and Hungerford. Hungerford. Actually we're nearer to Newbury than we are Hungerford. So we're just going to have a quiet little cruise up there today. <laughs> yeah boat has just come down so uh, hopefully all the locks are going to be set in our favour. So second lock of the day, this one, Druitt's lock, chief lock keeper, Druitt's lock. Druitt's. Ground paddles on this one. hoping to see when we got to Kin Kintbury was um, how the boats used to be powered yeah. the narrow boats used to be powered yeah. um, but unfortunately we didn't get to see that did we? No, no it was not not sort of working that day. Yeah and what we've got here what we just passed is the uh, the Kennet Boats Company horse-drawn uh, pleasure boat it runs I think from Easter through to September it can be done for bookings yeah, so the Kennet Horse Boat Company, there's the phone number there and I'll put a link to the website so anybody interested um, can check it out. Once he's finished we shall then fill up the water and then be set for another five or six days. Yeah, and Mark had his first... Well, I say me, we. We, we had yeah. our, our Very scary, scary moment. moment in a, in a lock. And it yeah. just, it just well, it brings home. You've only got to take your um, oh, eye off the ball. ball for a second yeah. and uh, how how things can go drastically wrong. Luckily, Luckily they didn't. Um, it, it resolved itself. Um, yeah. But, you know, it, it, it could have been nasty. Yeah, very. Well, we're now at Brunsden Lock. Uh, we just left Kintbury Lock and we had our first um, near miss lock incident. I should be able to explain to you if the mechanism is the same on this lock, I should be able to explain what actually happened. So we'll go and have a look. Yeah, so my near incident was what I tend to do is just pull the boat back um, in the lock gates. So my rear button, the rear button just sits against the gate. Well, the rear button got wedged underneath the um, paddle mechanism. So the water was going up 
and the back of the boat was staying where it was with the potential for that to uh, get swamped but luckily the chain broke one of the chains broke on the rear button so no no harm done Well, that's us, us moored up for the day. And um, we just, you can just see us there, just before Hungerford Town Lock. They're only uh, one day moorings. I don't know what the difference is between a one day mooring and a 24 hour mooring. If anybody knows, uh, leave it in the comments below. Yeah, so we moored up at Hungerford. Um, nice little mooring. Um, did the the shop that we do. Yeah, we've done our shopping in our in our way. That in we our do unique it, yeah. way. Yeah. And um, what a beautiful little town! It was a lovely little town. Yeah. Had everything you needed. Yeah, yeah nice little old-fashioned uh, hardware stroke. Yeah. Ironmongers. Yeah. yeah lovely yeah. little town. Yeah. What a. <laughs> we, and I was actually looking for some O's, wasn't I? Yes. <laughs> Uh, we, we we was uh, messing about um, watching the uh, two Ronnies video, the the four, the classic four candles one, and I was wanting some O's. It was that type of um, hardware store, yeah, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got, Very old got a couple of bits that I needed. Yeah, yeah it was well, lovely. I, well, I didn't get me O's. There we go. Just transferring the shopping from the trolley into the trolley instead of a big. Gas guzzling pickup truck that we used to have. It's about a two minute walk back to the boat. And we're when we left Hungerford we're we're cruising along and I you you tend to recognise boats that yeah. you've either seen by watching people's YouTube channels or you've passed various boats. And I'm, I'm looking at this boat and I think I recognise this. And then I, I see this uh, bespectacled, mustachioed face peering out the window. And uh, it was Mark and Julie from um, We're On The Move. They've yeah. got their own YouTube channel. And uh, so we stopped and had a had a nap with, with those, yeah. and then headed off to Great Bedwin, yeah. which was our our second mooring. And I, I did have some nice. Well, I thought I had some nice video footage of Great Bedwin, but uh, lost lost all of that. Sometimes but. Mark tends to um, video, <laughs> and um, and then I'll do, I'll do a wonderful video with with narration and all that, and I get and, to play it back. And, and there's and I've, it's I've gone, actually, it's lost. I've actually or... forgot to press the record button. I'm, I'm getting the Maybe hang of it. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah. yeah, I'm getting the hang of it. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. I've bumped into Mark and Julie from We're on the Move, who are not on the move because today we're on the move. <laughs> Anyway, while we while I was there, um, Mark and Julie contacted us about meeting up for a drink in the pub. pub. And Jono had been a little way behind us, yeah. so they got in touch with Jono. They then went and picked, picked Jono up. up, yeah. And we had and a we nice couple it. of hours in the pub, yeah, so putting, putting the, the world, world to rights. rights. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, was, was, it was wonderful. Yeah, that, that was a that was a beautiful afternoon. That was yeah, a lovely was afternoon. Really nice. yeah. Whilst in the pub socialising, I'm not allowed to video, so. Uh, no. I've actually got, you're going to have to take my word for it that we met up with those guys. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, we've got photographs. Yeah, yeah, so. It's just, I think, videoing while you're all having a lovely chat is just, just a little bit imposing. And, and editor-in-chief, so I have to yeah. have to do what she says. Otherwise, Mark would have his phone in his hand constantly. Oh, 
Yeah, you may. Tangly rope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know I'm not no Steven Spielberg, but hey ho. Then we left Great Bedwin. Yeah, and headed for Crofton, um, the pump house. Um, apparently there is wonderful. <laughs> Deb didn't find it as wonderful as I did. No, no. Well, it looks like I'm in the right place. So anybody planning to come to Crofton Pump and Station, you get in this pound here, there's plenty of moorings with rings, and uh, the pump and station is just there. Let's go have a look. Yeah, so from the boat, it's just a short walk. Across the lock. And just over there somewhere, there's a tunnel that goes under the railway. And here's the tunnel. And for the tall people, you will have to duck. There you go. Now, if you've ever wondered what's in a Lancashire boiler, let's have a look. As you can see, uh, Mark is, an ex ex is extremely passionate about anything steam or or anything like that. I don't know what you mean. Um, and also that Fred Dibner is his idol. <laughs> I can't believe you just said that. Deb's going to try and look interested at this bit and I'm yeah. going to keep it as brief as as I can. Really, really brief. Because I've been Please. editor in chief has told me I've got to keep it brief. Um, just to explain why um, the Crofton Pump and Station is there. Yeah, so basically the, uh, the Kennet and Avon is made up of three sections really. You've got the uh, River Avon from Bristol to Bath. You've got the River Kennet from Reading to Newbury. So then from Newbury to Bath, um, the man-made section is the Kennet and Avon. But the, the whole the whole network is called the Kennet and Avon. And the the summit level of that man-made section is between Crofton and Bur Burbage. And this is, I think it's about 450 metres above sea level. Way, way higher than any um, uh, sort of natural water source. So they originally planned on building a two and a half mile tunnel. And he came up with another idea of putting in a system of um, 12, then reduced to 10 locks um, going up. But obviously we needed, I say we, I weren't there. They needed a way to raise the water. The reason they put the pump and station where it was, was the availability of fresh water. Um, you've got lots of uh, fresh water springs there. So they was tapping into that water to be able to pump um, the water up to the summit. Yeah, so they built the... Uh, uh, pumping station in 1807 and installed the first engine and had that running by 1809 and the the, the second engine that went in um, was a Bolton and Watt engine and that was in and running in 1812 and it is still running today now apparently that is the only engine of its type still running that was and still doing the job it was designed to do in its original position. There. Yeah. Brilliant. Now, I could sit here, well, I couldn't because editorial chief is here, but I could sit here and waffle on about um, Newcomb engines and Bolton and Watt engines and 
Cornish tin mine beam engines but uh, obviously if you're interested in those things you're going to check them out anyway but if ever you get the opportunity to go there yeah definitely go there uh, unfortunately we was they have live steam days where they um, bring the engine up to steam and they, they run it off of steam but those are uh, bank holidays and we was when we visited we was actually uh, between it was a week before yeah it was it? a week before and, a, and a, we was a week after one bank holiday and a week before another one so uh, maybe if I hang about in the area uh, I think in August they were bringing it up to steam again are they yeah lovely I think that's a no <laughs> it's, it's, it's not a no it's just a maybe as you can see Mark has changed back to his normal self Yes, so uh, I think that covers it for this this little vlog. Yes. Um, if you enjoyed it, um, hit like the like it. button. If you haven't already subscribed, please please subscribe. The uh, little bell um, thingy, press that, and then that gets you get alerted for when we do another one. And that's it, really. Yeah, yeah I so think that is. So see you next time. Yeah, bye.